Now breaking tonight, Ukraine and Russia today made little progress on peace talks as bombardment of major Ukrainian cities continues. This comes as it's confirmed Ukraine's president will give an unprecedented virtual address to the House of Commons tomorrow. Meanwhile, a retired Ukrainian tennis star has swapped his racket for a rifle as he joins the thousands bravely defending their homeland. Sergei Stakovsky, who counts a Wimbledon defeat of Roger Federer among his many career highlights, was on holiday when the Russians invaded Ukraine. But he made the hard decision to leave his wife and three children in Budapest and return home to join the fight for his nation's freedom. Now a member of the army reservists, he's helping to repel the Russian invaders from his country's capital city of Kiev. I'm privileged to say that Sergi joins me now. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Thank you for uh, joining us. Uh, can you tell me what the situation is like where you are at the moment in Kiev? Well, Kiev is pretty safe in terms of gunfights, but, you know, there's shelling and uh, bombs coming in every day. We got four to seven times a day uh, airstrike alarms, so we need to go down. Some of those alarms, of course, we uh, ignore, although we shouldn't. Uh, but, yeah, in terms of that, Kiev is uh, so far safe inside. Uh, but, of course, we all expect that it's going to take the course of Kharkiv, which has been uh, bombed heavily. Uh, for the last four days, uh, aviation and ground forces. So uh, nobody knows what's going to happen next. Russians are shelling civilian sectors, killing civilian people. It's not doesn't look good. Uh, Sergey, uh, do you have a weapon? Are you armed? I do have a weapon. And what are you willing to do if the attacks are closer to home in the capital city of Kiev? Well, I'll see. I'll stand my ground by means necessary. How do your family feel about your decision to go back home, Sergi? I would say not happy, uh, but I still have family here as well. My brother and my father, who was my grandmother, stayed behind. Uh, they couldn't leave, so I came to see them as well. Of course, uh, I understand. And it was a tough choice for me, and there's no right choice in my situation. If I would stay home... Um, I would feel guilt because I left my father and my brother behind and and I didn't didn't join to help my country to survive this mess. Uh, if I would I, now I, I'm here and I feel guilt because I left my little kids and her and a wife. Uh, obviously what's happening in Ukraine is a, a humanitarian disaster. It's the most awful crime against the Ukrainian people. Tennis world number two, Novak Djokovic, a man I'm sure that you know well has offered his support to you, hasn't he? Yeah, he did, as, uh, alongside with all other tennis players, a lot of them. Uh, it just, you know, Novak is one of the most famous tennis players uh, in the world, and he's, uh, he's a well-known athlete, so of course, uh, putting him as a spotlight gives a little extra, uh, extra views or extra support of Ukraine, because... Right now, Ukraine is not left alone in terms of media, in terms of people. We receive a tremendous amount of uh, messages and, and prayers from all over the world. Uh, and it helps it raise the spirit of the Ukrainian defenders. But we do need help from, from the rest of the world as, as well, a little bit, just to level this fight. Uh, what, what do you think that help would look like, Sergi? Well, I, everybody says it's impossible, but we would really need uh, somebody would close the sky above us so the Russia wouldn't be able to shell our cities and to fly and do the airstrikes above our heads. Uh, on the ground, it's going to be a fair fight. Russian army is not motivated enough. They're invaders. They expect when they're going to come, you know, the people will, will celebrate them with bread and butter. But unfortunately, uh, for them, it's a quite the opposite. The people are, with bare hands are trying to stop their tanks from progressing. They're shouting them to get out. They don't want any Russian world inside Ukraine. And they're shocked. They're demoralized. Uh, and um, they understand that they're trying to fight the fight, which, uh, which, which they can never win. I mean, you cannot just occupy a 40 million country. Ukraine is the size of Europe, if you put it on a map. And uh, just Russia doesn't have enough mili militia to do it. 
and you cannot control even even if they roll into Kiev, you, you cannot conquer Kiev. Kiev is a in a business day, it's about four million people inside it. Well, now during the war, okay, even if fifty percent, seventy percent left, you still have a million city, and to control it permanently, you either level it to the ground, or you need to put about three, four hundred thousand uh, troops on the streets. They don't have it, but Ukrainians are willing to fight on every street. I've, I've traveled through the city multiple times, and. Uh, I'm not going to say it, but, you know, it's almost an open season to Russians. Right? Do you fear for your life? Yes. And what are I your mean, emotions? Be... What, what are your emotions around that? I mean, is this courage? Is it anger? What what motivates you, Sergi? Because it's it's remarkable what you're doing, but many wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't. Mean... I wouldn't say it's courage or uh, madness. It's just the routine you're trying to get in. You know, you're trying to do things so you don't think about what's going on around. And that makes it much easier. And then you get used to it. Of course, you have your ups, you have your downs, you have your spirits raised up, uh, you have your spirits raised down. It's it's a normal state. I'm not a military personnel. I have no idea how this situation unfold or what to expect. So, of course, my uh, conscience is constantly, you know, driving me and, at the end of the line, there will be a, a period somewhere soon, I guess, when I'm going to get tired. Um, if there is not going to be a no-fly zone over Ukraine, how do you see this conflict playing out, Sergi? Well, there will be a lot of that. Civilians, uh, mil- uh, military, but there will be, there'll be hundreds of thousands of that because the, the resistance is quite strong. Uh, we've seen the. We've been in war with Russia for eight years, so we've seen what they have to bring to the table uh, through Luhansk and Donetsk, and that's nothing but the misery and destruction. And Ukrainians, they don't want to live in misery and destruction. And on top of everything, Ukrainians just doesn't want to live in the world as a dictatorship. That's one thing that you know Ukrainians can live with bad governance. Uh, you know, uh, they can live in not the best social. Um, conditions. But one thing you cannot really take away from them is the freedom. And once you challenge that, then you challenge the nation. My final question, Sergi, um, can Russia be stopped in Ukraine? Can they be defeated? Of course they can, and they will be. But it will need the world to look at it. Can Russia be defeated in the absence of a no-fly zone over Ukraine? This is a question which I cannot answer because I'm not a military attaché or mm. not even in defence system. But I think been... that the whole world is yeah. surprised that we are still standing. So I yeah. guess that's the answer to your question. I think that Mr Putin has grossly underestimated the courage and spirits of the Ukrainian people uh, perfectly distilled in you, Sergi. Um, we wish you well. I hope you're able to stay safe and that you can stay in touch with your family and that this most awful conflict reaches a swift and uh, hopefully uh, not too hazardous conclusion. Um, Thank you for joining us, Sergi Stakovsky. Thank you, sir. Take care, and I hope we can catch up with Sergi Stakovsky uh, in the near future. What a shocking story, Esther, and what a courageous guy, very typical of the Ukrainian people. We've heard so many stories like that. I know, I don't think people, well, I mean, I'm sure people realise, but this is very, imagine leaving your family, mm. knowing that there's a very real chance you could die because you're defending values that are, you're defending something that's bigger than you. He's defending the right for his family to even go back to Ukraine as it is. Um, one of the things he said, which struck me, was the fact that, you know, Russian ground forces are not motivated enough, mm. um, which, you know, is quite telling because I did see a, a video of a, a Russian, a captured Russian soldier who said, you know, we've been lied to, we, we've, we were told that we were fighting the Nazis. And all that. I'm not sure of the, the val- validity of that, but it does show that there are two sides to the story and that we, should, we shouldn't dehumanise the Russian people because of what Putin is doing. And I think that's very important as well. There yeah. are people that are actually... Fu- I mean, there are many Russians that have family in Ukraine. It's, it's not simple as... Just, it's not as black and white as it seems or, you know, this binary narrative that's being pushed. Um, and I think that's something that, you know, people really need to take into account. Yeah, completely agree with you. Benjamin, what do you think about this man's story? Well, I mean, it's true of of the Ukrainian people that we're seeing en masse, right? There is somebody who has the lifestyle, the social access, the money 
to make choices prior to this getting so bad. But he knows he has to fight for his country and for his family. And we're seeing so many people, you know, the former president... Uh, Poroshenko, if I pronounced <clears throat> it correctly, who had left the country because he was facing some, some criminal charges, but he came back putting himself at some risk to fight for his country quite literally on the streets. Yeah. The mayor of Kiev, who is a very well-paid boxer who's going out and fighting. And, and I think that is why <clears throat> Russia will lose, because even if they can shell these cities and destroy buildings and kill so many people, there will still be far more of the 44 million left who are never going to let Russia or a proxy for Russia govern them. And that is why I think Russia has no hope. The question is how much damage will be done in the meantime. Well, yes, uh, the issue is that Russia's only real threat, if we're going to listen to Sergei, is from, from the air. Mm. And that raises the question about a no-fly zone over Ukraine. Uh, many people are calling for that because there's a humanitarian argument, arguably mi militarily as well. It, it probably would uh, essentially defeat Russia. But if you've got... Um, the West shooting Russian planes out of the sky, then that's World War Three, isn't it? It is, and that's the problem, and that's why it hasn't happened so far. But I think that was an incredibly powerful and, and moving interview, not because of who he is, not because he's a tennis player, but because he talked about... Well, you were describing the SNP before. That's nationalism. That's actually quite dangerous. What he is doing is about patriotism. It's an entirely different thing. And, and he talked about the guilt of leaving his family, but he was also talking about the guilt that he feels now, because he's now he's there to look after his, his father and his brother. My husband is Bosnian, and was, when the war started, he was living here. He tried to get back to Bosnia to fight because he said, I will never live with this. I have to go and fight. And he couldn't get back in. The Serbs took the, the airport to Sarajevo. He couldn't get back. But he would have done that. And that, that's, I think, what's driving all of those men that are there now. It's not about that he's a famous tennis player. Yes, he could have dodged it. He could have stayed in comfort and whatever. But the bottom line is, you know, all the people... The courage is not about what these people do for a living. It's what's in their heads and it's what they feel about their country. And I thought that was incredibly moving and powerful because you see him. He, you know, he's... <laughs> You know, he's he's sad, He's you know he's but he's not beaten and he's going to fight. Yeah. And, and he's got two young kids and he's got a wife somewhere else and they they will be going nuts. They will be. They, she would have, I, I would imagine, held on physically and said, you can't go. But he knows, as, as a man, he, can't, he couldn't stay with them either. Well, he yes, uh, lo lots more from my panel. Daily Express columnist Carol Malone, senior reporter at the I newspaper, Benjamin Butterworth, and social commentator Esther Kraku, would you let your partner go back to their homeland to fight for freedom? Mark <clears throat> at gbnews.uk.